everyone out there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I myself am calling in from uh, from uh, East Coast US in uh, in New Hampshire. Very pleased to be here, and thanks to Geo Awesomeness and Airbus for inviting me, inviting DHI to uh, to the scene today. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll I'll be I'll be here to to try and introduce to you a concrete use case where we applied some of the new Airbus Neo data uh, to monitor biodiversity indicators and and various sort of the maritime aspects in area in uh, in Florida. Uh, but if but before I go to that, I'll just uh, very briefly outline who we are in DHI. Um, basically, we're we're a Danish company with uh, over 50 years track record um, in developing various consultancies, solutions, and software services to uh, deal with water um, uh, environments. So basically, we do a, a ton of various um, various stuff uh, that all has to do with uh, with powering decisions powering water decisions um, so uh, yeah that's uh, that's basically the key mandate uh, we're based in 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 Denmark as I said but we have a have a strong global presence with uh, 25 offices worldwide one of them being the US office um, where I'm currently stationed um, yeah, as I said, we transverse everything that's water, and we do various services, services uh, across sort of the water-related domains. So everything from agriculture to aquaculture, uh, offshore energy, climate change, coastal and marine uh, application, uh, and all the way to to sort of the to water resource management and and mining uh, applications. Basically, we do everything that's uh, somehow related to water, uh, and I'd even say beyond. Uh, because going to uh, to our EO umbrella of DHI, where I'm uh, I'm located, we uh, we've been working with uh, Earth observation data for plus twenty twenty years, uh, twenty two years actually soon, um, and it's. Uh, a core component of DHI's uh, solutions in the modeling domain. So we deliver a ton of different data components that basically used to drive the engines of uh, of our uh, hydrodynamic models and uh, and other types of uh, modeling stuff that's going on in DHI and other sort of uh, project uh, advisory solutions we're doing. Uh, so as you can see there, we we do EO. Um, data products in basically all domains from from the offshore environments uh, looking at uh, mid ocean data uh, stretching plumes water quality to the coastal zone where we do bathymetry and monitor coastal dynamics vegetation all of that stuff uh, all the way onto the onshore and inland stuff where we do uh, a lot of different work on related to agriculture and to urban monitoring and dynamics uh, to freshwater environments. Uh, yeah, you name it. We do a ton of stuff. Um, so that's basically just to set the scene here uh, and, and sort of illustrate some of the capacity and some of the some of the work we've been doing. But enough about that. Uh, I'll take you on your way to Florida uh, here in the US. Now Airbus took you worldwide on a on a very pleasant tour before. So I'll tune in here to to focus on on this area, which uh, I, I'm sure you're most familiar with. Um, but Florida is not just uh, sun, sand, and a lot of toasty people on the beach. Uh, it's actually also one of the most biodiversity-rich environments in the world. Uh, it has more than 80 distinct ecosystems that's home to a whole diversity of different plant and animal species. Uh, so it has a very rich uh, biodiversity. Uh, a lot of it is incredibly threatened, though, for many reasons, uh, primarily to, to climate change, but definitely also anthropogenic uh, disturbances um, of various sorts. So we chose to for today to zoom in on, uh, on Florida and more specifically zoom in on this area called uh, Crystal River, which is uh, up here in the north uh, northwestern uh, Northwestern part of uh, of Florida, where they have one of the highest population densities of manatees or dugongs or sea cows, uh, however you want to refer to them, basically the same thing. 
Um, and it's a critically endangered species that's becoming more and more uh, endangered these days. Um, and um, not least to this, uh, that's the reason why we chose this use case. Uh, I discovered a ton of these types of news over the past two months here in, uh, in the US, uh, uh, mentioning uh, how the uh, Florida wildlife authorities are feeding tons upon tons of uh, letters to the to the sea cows and they're doing that in response to last year where they saw a record number of uh, of manatees dying in Florida uh, in excess of 1000 uh, one of the main reasons for this uh, was Primarily, and uh, a lot of uh, anthropogenic uh, disturbances, uh, but largely also climate change impacts, which has worsened algal blooms, which then kills off the, the the submerged aquatic vegetation on which the manatees and many different other species uh, depend on. So we tried to zoom in uh, on this and try to see what could we do if we're looking at manatees and want to provide relevant information that can be used to conserve both the manatees and, and these critically endangered uh, ecosystems altogether. So Airbus uh, provided us with this uh, very nice, crisp, uh, new imagery from, uh, from the Crystal River, um, Crystal River area. As you can see, it's actually two separate images. Uh, in the western part is an image from uh, 2022, and in the eastern part is from 2021, which we stitched together uh, to make something fancy. Um, a lot of the talk so far has been around the symmetry, uh, which is uh, definitely also something we do and have uh, 10 plus year experience with. And we did that also in this case. Uh, and as you can see, um, you get really nice results. You get very crisp and very detailed insights into the to the to the bathymetry, so the water depths uh, in this whole Crystal River area. Um, and uh, and that's a key stronghold here. I mean, you can really see how clearly we can outline the sandbars, uh, and how clearly we can uh, we can map uh, very sort of detailed um, uh, local sort of bathymetry contours in this um, in this area. We also um, we also looked at submerged aquatic vegetation. Uh, of course, that was uh, that was a primary component of this use case. I'll just zoom this uh, this in a little bit more. Uh, again, very interesting here. Uh, with the NEO data, we really get a very, very highly detailed insight into um, the, the, the aquatic vegetation beds, uh, which have extremely high spatial complexity and temporal variability. Um, and that really makes it critical to monitor uh, or apply data that has high spatial, spectral, and not least temporal resolution. And that's where the, the Pleiades Neo constellation certainly comes into the picture here because it allows us to get this very crisp and, and uh, detailed insight into what is the status uh, of, uh, of the submerged aquatic vegetation. Where do we have the denser seabeds? Uh, where do we have sparse vegetation? Where is it disappearing? Uh, where is it coming? So, uh, so you can get very uh, key, clear insight into, into these variations. One thing uh, we discovered when we looked at the imagery, which was really interesting, and again, this illustrates the perspectives of, of, the, of the high resolution 30 centimeter data here, um, is that we found this area called Sandy Hook, uh, and we found all of these, you can probably see them here, these uh, tracks in the, in the aquatic vegetation here close to the, to the shore. I'll put it out there, you'll have uh, 10 seconds to, to come in your comments what you think it is. Uh, I didn't know what it was, so I turned to Google, which I usually do, uh, when I find these types of things that I have no idea what is. I thought it was some animal tracks, maybe even the dugongs feeding on the uh, vegetation. Uh, but no, it's, uh, it's boat scars. So it's, uh, it's propeller scars uh, that's caused by the many, many vessels in this area crisscrossing these uh, aquatic vegetation beds. Uh, and it's an incredibly big issue uh, all around Florida, basically. And they have a lot of these at uh, different places uh sort of alerting uh, boaters about this and and providing advice on how to deal with this 
So it's a tremendous issue really all around the coastal areas of, of Florida and it has detrimental effects on the aquatic vegetation, all of these propellers that, uh, that destroys the seabed. And so then we had a, a look around the, the, the collective area here and we found these scars basically all over the place. Um, so that was very interesting. Uh, and of course, we can also use this again to map the seabed vegetation and also identify these areas where the vegetation has been damaged. Um, and this way, new data is really something that can make a huge difference here uh, as a tool that, I mean, usually when we map aquatic vegetation, it's about quantity. So it's about measuring uh, the overall uh, extent and density of aquatic vegetation. This specific thing is actually a qualitative parameter that we can, we can track and monitor with the NEO data to identify the overall health and some of these risks associated uh, or some of these threats associated with the aquatic vegetation. So here we can actually use and apply NEO data to take a snapshot image uh, uh, and map out all of these areas where you have the uh, damages occurring from propeller scars and then couple that with the bathymetry data, then you have a really strong tool that the authorities can use to identify the areas that's uh, most exposed to these types of issues. So they can put one of these buoys out there to alert the motor boaters that, uh, that this is a concern in this area. So very, uh, very sort of a very interesting use case here uh, that where new data certainly uh, comes into, uh, into key relevance. Then, what we also did, uh, and that was actually the uh, ultimate use case uh, or the, what we started out to do. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I think uh, I've spent too much time already. Uh, but just to say that this is also a key application arena of, uh, of Airbus New. Now Airbus asked us before to manually count all the boats uh, in the water. Uh, that's not really something we like to do. So of course we, we get a machine to do that for us. Um, and that's what we did here uh, to count all the 243 vessels in this area of the Crystal River. And we also trained the machine to identify um, 22 manatees in this area. Um, this is a small use case, but I mean, consider the application potential here to use new data as a large scale screening tool to assess these types of mammal species. It could also be whales, uh, which is a very complex uh, type of mammal to really uh, quantify and assess at scale. Here we can really have with the high temporality of new data, we can screen sort of basin wide uh, marine areas uh, and try and, and, and quantify the, the maritime, the, the marine life. So massive potential here. Uh, and this is just an example of, of how you can do this and how you can automate it. Um, and I just want to bring this into relevance because I think this is quite important uh, again and, and try and put into perspective. So we found quite a number of, uh, of sea cows, which are about three meters in length. Uh, the NEO satellites are 620 kilometers orbiting above us. Um, 620 kilometers is about this sort of uh, buffer zone from, from Copenhagen, from the Copenhagen area where DHI is located. Um, it corresponds approximately to the distance from Copenhagen to Berlin. Now in Copenhagen, one of the, the most famous attractions we have is this, is this little mermaid, which is about 1.2 meters in height. Um, so, uh, and with the rock below, it's probably about the same size as a sea cow. So what the NEO uh, satellites are able to do is basically equivalent of me jumping into the Berlin TV tower and taking an image directly of the Little Mermaid in Copenhagen Harbor. I just find that so extremely fascinating. I mean, now I can just go to Berlin and take a picture with a, a NEO satellite and then I don't need to go to Copenhagen. Um, of course, that's not how it is, but it, it just brings it into perspective how fascinating this, uh, this uh, technology is and how far Airbus has really pushed the technology here. I'll wrap this up uh, just with a, a few Key conclusions here, uh, I find uh, really the temporality of the NEO satellite constellation is a key stronghold uh, of them here. Uh, there is already other types of satellites that provide uh, 30 centimeter data, but not with this type of temporality that the NEO data do. Um, and 
it's sole source. Uh, so particularly when we want to automate data processing and we want to apply it on very high resolution data, it's really key that we work with the same type of data uh, that has the same sort of the technical uh, specifications and dimensions that makes it much easier to automate these processes. Uh, and we can cover these maritime dynamics much more effectively and efficiently uh, with this uh, with this high uh, tempo of frequency with the with the daily revisit time of the new data. Of course, the spatial resolution I talked about that 30 centimeters. That's very close to what you typically get from aerial imagery, uh, which planes are acquiring from about two kilometers height, which is uh, about 10 centimeters uh, plus minus. So. We're really coming into an arena here where it's it's uh, extremely competitive to uh, to yeah aerial imagery or yeah even getting closer to to drone imagery, but yet you have the scalability potential of a satellite to to capture very large areas. Um, and the spectral resolution, six distinct spectral bands. Uh, we mapped uh, vegetation density here, but. Uh, uh, one aspect of, of applying these uh, these uh, various uh, these all these six different bands is also to potentially go deeper into and map uh, various vegetation species, um, and of course it allows us to get more accurate retrievals of the uh, of the water depths, which I also showed you. So this was uh, my 15 plus minutes. Uh, sorry, it went too quick. Uh, I had limited time, but I hope you uh, you uh, you. Uh, you enjoyed this uh, this presentation use case. Please connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the link is here, and uh, I'll also post it in the chat uh, shortly. So, with that, thank you very much for your attention.